Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about imposter syndrome, okay? You and I are going to have a conversation. Why? Because maybe you've been feeling like an imposter. And it doesn't matter whether it's in your professional life, your academic life, or your personal life. This video idea was suggested to me by a very dear friend of mine. You know who you are. And I wanted to thank you so much for the suggestion because the entire goal of this channel is to help. That's why I make the videos. That's why I do 100 takes per video to get it just right so that I feel it's actually helpful. And let's talk about that for a second. Why do I do 100 takes each video? Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Why do I spend hours trying to get it perfect? Because I am myself feel like an imposter when it comes to making videos, when it comes to doing meditations or giving talks. People have even asked me, you know, what are the qualifications? And to be honest, in today's age, anybody can really speak on anything. It just depends whether you feel brave enough to share your experience. But oftentimes I find myself feeling like a complete fraud and all of the things I do to make up for it, like plan my videos out, research them extensively, do a hundred takes, really doesn't help. And why is that? Well, because imposter syndrome stems from a core belief system. Imposter syndrome is a belief that we all, to some extent, hold that we are not as good or as talented or as smart or funny or insert adjective here as our peers and we constantly feel afraid that we're going to be discovered as the talentless frauds that we think ourselves to be and the problem with this is that we're constantly living ashamed of ourselves and the work that we do in any particular area so truth be told we can't actually get anything done now the first study on imposter syndrome was done by two psychologists named Pauline Rose Clance and Suzanne Amet Imes, PhD. These psychologists interviewed in the 1970s a group of 150 high achieving, hardworking and successful women across fields and across academic routes of study, I don't know what you want to call it, but they interviewed this diverse group of women. And what they found was that across the board, the main idea was the same. The common characteristic was that these women felt this, quote, intellectual phoniness that somehow they were going to be discovered as not worthy of having their job, even though they were successful, getting praise for the work that they were doing in their respective careers. It wasn't enough to change that core belief. I'm gonna read you the summary from that study. The summary is, the term imposter phenomenon, which is what they called it, folks, is used to designate an internal experience of intellectual phoniness that appears to be particularly prevalent and intense among a select sample of high achieving women. Certain early family dynamics and later introjection of societal sex role stereotyping appear to contribute significantly to the development of the imposter phenomenon. Despite outstanding academic and professional accomplishments, women who experience the imposter phenomenon persist in believing that they are really not bright and have fooled anyone who thinks otherwise. Numerous achievements which one might expect to provide ample objective evidence of superior intellectual functioning do not appear to affect the imposter belief. Four factors that contribute to the maintenance of imposter feelings over time are explored, blah, 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 blah. Now, there's a lot to unpack there, but there's three key things that contribute to the imposter phenomenon. Number one, I'm a big believer that we internalize whatever we grew up with. So the values and the core beliefs that we were taught. Sociologists say that when you're growing up in the family, what you're experiencing is primary socialization. So you're learning how to manage relationships, even if it's only a few. You may have your nuclear family or your extended family, but you internalize the concept and the extent to which you believe you are worthy of certain things. So think back. Now, of course, I don't know your current situation. I don't know the specifics. But think back to what 
value was placed on specific aspects of life like family itself work being successful professionally having your work praised having it published etc etc a lot of people who grew up in these families where people were workaholics they were constantly putting their personal life on the back burner so they could work more are more likely to have that same mindset when it comes to sacrificing yourself for the field the academic prowess the professional gain whatever it is is that healthy of course not but that brings us to the second thing that contributes to imposter syndrome and that is societal expectations high school in particular is a competitive environment now more than ever and if you take any of these upper level classes like ap ace ib abc god knows what classes you're taking but every single one of these classes you enter in there's an immense amount of work some classes more than others but still and you're surrounded by similarly minded people smart hard-working individuals who are ready to sacrifice whatever it may take from their personal life in order to succeed in those classes for many of these people from what i've seen firsthand the grades determine your mood the grades determine your overall conception of how successful you are and so when we place our self-worth on a condition to how well we do in school obviously there are going to be feelings of being a fraud there are going to be feelings of not being enough and that brings us to the third thing which is again that imposter syndrome comes from a core belief system that we are simply not worthy of the success that we are experiencing and have worked for now obviously we know that imposter syndrome happens to anyone and everyone this study was conducted in the 1970s and since then we have a greater awareness of what imposter syndrome actually is now from all the websites that i've done research on i've come up with a sort of summarized definition and that is quote imposter syndrome occurs in high achievers who are unable to internalize and accept their successes they often attribute any success they have to luck or chance rather than to ability and work again coming from that whole core belief standpoint if you believe that the sky is blue nothing that i tell you about the sky being red purple orange or yellow is going to change your perception so looking for that external validation when it comes to believing that we are imposters doesn't do jack to help us change that belief suzanne imes actually said many people who feel like imposters grew up in families that placed a big emphasis on achievement in particular parents who send mixed messages alternating between overpraise and criticism can increase the risk of future fraudulent feelings societal pressures only add to the problem so everything that you and i have been talking about she just wrapped it up and put a ribbon on it because she mentions that okay your early upbringing basically teaches you what is worthy of praise what's worthy of acceptance and what's going to get you to that state of being loved so if you were taught that you need to sacrifice yourself excessively for work as you grow up societal pressures are only going to make that worse culture has a lot to do with it as well some cultures prioritize having a good job some cultures find that specific groups of people are made to work and other people are granted roles that don't reflect their actual abilities it's unfair it's skewed but it's also part of certain cultures and that's something to take into account as well now i want to make a point about this pressure to achieve in society in western society my personal belief is that the lines between self-worth and academic acceptance or professional achievement are blurred when you ask somebody who they are the first thing they tell you is i'm a student oh i'm an engineer oh i'm a technician blah 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 it doesn't matter who you are really it only matters what you do because that's how people define themselves 
and you find people who have grown so attached to that identity that they literally cannot separate themselves from their profession, which I find unhealthy. Now, Pauline Rose Clance has somewhat of a different view. She believes that imposter syndrome comes from perfectionism. And this brings two responses to stress. Let's say that you have a big project coming up. You're either, in Clance's view, gonna do one of two things. You are going to work yourself to the bone and really put in a lot of unnecessary effort and time into this project compared to somebody else who only does what's necessary. You do all that extra work, torture yourself over that, work late nights, blah, 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 turn it in, and then you get really, really positive feedback because it's evident how much effort and time you spent on it. Is it good that we get positive feedback for our work? Of course, but does it do anything to change that cycle? No, because what happens is that subconsciously, we believe we must burn ourselves out and torture ourselves to get that positive feedback and to do well. And that's a really, really vicious cycle right there. The second response is to procrastinate. So you've heard, or maybe you've seen these videos of people saying, I just woke up at 12 a.m. to finish my college thesis, blah, blah, blah. And really that's unhealthy. It might not be a popular view, especially with academics, but I feel like if you manage your time effectively, if you truly dedicate two hours, one hour, to just working straight through whatever it is you have to do, you won't have to sacrifice all that of your personal life in order to reach this arbitrary academic standard. Also, it's important to realize that in an academic context, you may feel like you're not meant to be in your classes. You may be undersensitive to praise and oversensitive to criticism. It's important to realize that you are not alone. It's a cliche, but you are not alone. That's why I started this video with that whole talk about how I literally cannot accept the fact that some of my videos are gonna be better or worse or maybe more confusing or more unclear than others. It's perfectionism, it's feeling like an imposter. And guess what? Everybody at some point in their lives has felt like or will feel like an imposter. We all have doubt. Doubt is what saved our ancestors from being eaten by all those prehistoric animals. That's why I'm here talking to you. That's why we live in society. In the end, folks, you are not alone at all. As well as that, comparison to other people's most perfect moments, perfect assignments, or toil, unnecessary torture, is unhealthy as well. If you feel bad because you're not pulling all-nighters or your classes aren't loaded with so much work as the next person over, that's completely fine. Comparison is the thief of joy, and it's completely unnecessary when you realize that your decisions and your life is ultimately your own. You were born alone. You will leave this earth alone. Now, yes, it's, it's morbid. It's like crazy, but it's real. You should not compare yourself to anyone else. And I can sit here and say that, and that's really great for me to say that to you, but it's something that we have to work towards and actively catch ourselves doing. Now let's get to the solutions. First off, about catching yourself doing it. The first step is awareness. So become aware of when you start to feel like an imposter or a fraud. And recognize this as a faulty line of thought called emotional reasoning. I may wake up one day of the week and think, wow, for no reason at all, I feel completely terrible today. So you know what? I'm sure the day is gonna be a disaster. I need to catch myself doing that and say, wait, just because I feel a certain way doesn't actually mean that that's how things are gonna play out or that that's the accurate reality I'm going through. We may feel like something horrible is gonna happen or we're gonna be discovered or blah, 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 but it's all going on inside our heads. That's why you shouldn't make assumptions about what reality is because the truth is that even Buddha had to sit under that tree for God knows how long and starve himself before he said he was able to see the real nature of things and that we cloud our minds with so much unnecessary stuff, we don't even know what's real anymore. 
the next time you catch yourself feeling like that, take a step back and seriously evaluate the moment. Another thing is that nobody is expected to have all the answers. Imposter syndrome is a really, really unique part of living in the 21st century, of living in this highly interconnected, technologically advanced world. Because I'm sure people were experiencing imposter phenomenon way back when, but now we actually have the resources and the solutions to talk about it and to have that conversation. Every single day, we are growing. We are all in progress on the next level to becoming whoever it is we want to be. Because if we were all perfect, what's even the point of being here, folks? What's the point of me making this video? What's the point of you doing anything other than sitting around because you're perfect? None of us are enlightened, like really, really enlightened or highly evolved or whatever you want to call it. We are all still learning as we go and that's the beauty of life. And lastly, to end this video off, I want to include an example from the new school of New York City. Now, this man named William Somerville was training to become a clinical psychologist at the new school in New York City. And he detailed how he himself, when he started giving initial therapy sessions, felt like an imposter. So imagine if somebody training to become a clinical psychologist and to spend 10 hours a day studying and working with the human mind experiences imposter syndrome. Imagine how it is for the rest of us that aren't going to the new school or to a university to earn a psychology degree. It's a universal phenomenon, so we are not alone. It happens to everyone. And the most important thing is that we can recognize it as being both unhelpful and untrue. We don't have to give in to those feelings and we can also remind ourselves of our good qualities. That negative bias over focusing on the negative things really brings us nowhere and it doesn't reflect the objective truth of who we are or how well we do in any area of life. So that said, to you who requested this video, Thank you for watching. I sincerely hope this helped. And if you guys have any other suggestions for videos, comment down below. You can leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next one.